and its recurrence should consider regularly incorporating soy foods. All right, let's move on to the next one here. The next myth that we're going to dive in here is the myth that cancer cells cannot survive in an alkaline environment and therefore consuming an alkaline diet is best for anyone with cancer. Now the idea and the concept behind this idea is that cancer cells cannot survive in an alkaline environment and conversely they thrive in an acidic environment. And this alkaline diet approach is the idea that avoiding acidic foods and consuming alkaline foods can change the pH of our blood. Now if you go out and you go into Google and you search for an acidic food list, you're going to get a lot of different things. There isn't a very consistent list out there. It, you're going to most likely be confused because one list is going to say this is alkaline and another list is going to say this is acidic and there's just really not a lot of consistency out there. Generally speaking though if we're going to put this together we'll find that alkaline foods that fall under that category are going to be fresh fruits and vegetables, plant proteins, and alkaline water. Whereas acidic, acidic foods are tend to be high sodium foods, processed meats, processed cereals, eggs, caffeinated drinks and alcohol, oats and whole grains, milk, nuts and seeds, beans, and lentils. But like I mentioned before there just isn't a lot of consistency out there. And just as a reminder, when we think about pH and we think about acidic versus alkaline, we have this scale of 0 to 14. And 7 is considered neutral, so it's neither acidic nor alkaline. And anything less than 7 is considered acidic, and anything greater than 7 is considered alkaline. Now, when I think about the pH, I think about actually the fact we have a swimming pool at home is that, you know, we're testing the pH of our water to make sure that it's safe for our skin and everything like that. However, what we're referring to here is the pH of the human body and specifically the blood. So when we talk about the pH of the human body, our pH is actually 7.35 to 7.45. It stays in this very tight control between these numbers. And so remember that 7 is considered neutral. So we are slightly, very slightly alkaline here because it's greater than 7, right? Um, now we have something called an acid-base balance, which is primarily using our lungs and kidneys and sometimes even our bones to help make sure that we're staying in this really tight control of 7.35 to 7.45. The pH of our blood needs to stay in this tight control and our body's pretty darn good at doing it using our lungs, kidneys, and bones. So for example of how our bones can help us do that is that if there is um, an issue our body, our bones can release calcium from the bones and the calcium that is released from the bones is alkaline which can neutralize an acid. So as you can imagine this actually increases the risk of osteoporosis. But primarily it's done through the lungs and the kidneys and that is to increase or decrease the breathing rate and thus the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide to make the pH of the blood either more acidic or more alkaline depending on the state that it's in. And then our kidneys can reabsorb bicarbonate more or less than it needs to in order to help make sure this pH is where it's supposed to be. The important thing to know is that our diet has actually very little influence over the pH of our blood. Okay, I want to emphasize that it has little influence over the pH of our blood. And if it did, we'd actually be in pretty big trouble. Now it is true that the pH of our saliva and or urine may change slightly based on our diet but it isn't a true reflection of the pH of your blood and that is because our blood needs to stay in this tight control. Now here we talk about, I want to go into a little bit about like blood versus urinary chemistry. So this is actually pulled from a study that shows, because I want you to understand the difference between like the blood and the urine and acid load. So research shows that a low carbohydrate, high protein diet increases something called acid load, but it does result in very little changes in the blood chemistry and pH, um, but can change in result of the urinary chemistry. So we can increase, something can increase an in acid load, but doesn't necessarily change our blood chemistry, but can change our urinary chemistry. So this is something important to know as we go into the next few slides. So let's look at nutrition and pH. 
So when you look at these two foods, we have lemon and orange, and they are citrus. And a lot of people are assume that this is an acidic food because they are acidic, right? Especially in terms of how, you know, when it comes to heartburn and so forth, they, they are acidic. However, what makes something acidic or alkaline actually depends on how our body digests and metabolizes a particular food, not necessarily the fact that tomatoes or lemon and citrus have acid in it. So let's look at some of the studies here. So this particular study looked at animal and plant protein and human bone health and found that if we have increased animal protein in the diet, we have an increase in acid load. But when we have higher amounts of fruits and vegetables, we actually have lower acid load. Now let's focus on what we currently understand before we move on. First, our body must stay in a tight pH control or problems will exist. Our body has several different ways to manage pH, primarily through our lungs, kidneys, and bones. And whether a food is considered acidic or alkaline is dependent on how they're digested and metabolized in the body, not by the food's natural state. And certain foods, such as high amounts of animal protein, can increase acid load in the body, but it doesn't ultimately alter the pH of our blood as we have tight mechanisms constantly at work to help our pH in a tight range. And as I mentioned in the previous slide here, that higher animal protein diets may create a higher acid load, whereas high diets high in vegetables and fruits can actually reduce the acid load. So let's look a little bit more at the research. Now the initial studies on the alkaline diet and cancer were derived from studies conducted in a laboratory study rather than in the human body. And there are human studies that are lacking, but we do have a few that we can gather some information on. First and foremost, this one here showed that when we had higher amount of acid load foods, we had increased risk of breast cancer. Also, when we had higher meat consumption, we also had increased risk of breast cancer. And this makes sense together, but we know that higher animal protein increased acid load, which we also know can now increase breast cancer risk. If we have higher fruit and vegetable consumption, we have lower breast cancer risk. And this one also shows that when we have higher acid load foods, um, such as those higher animal proteins, we increase inflammation and we actually have higher blood sugars. Um, this is something that's not commonly known is that some of these higher acid load foods are going to increase blood sugars um, and actually increase our response of insulin and so forth. Now, these two studies that I just shared suggested that higher acid load can increase the risk of breast cancer. So is the question here is, in my opinion, is it the alkaline diet itself that is reducing the risk of breast cancer? Well, research actually points that it's more strongly related to the improved health benefits from phytochemicals, fiber, vitamins, and minerals that are present in a high plant-based diet, rather than the fact that these foods may lean towards the alkaline diet. So what am, what am I saying? What am I trying to break this down to? What I'm trying to say is that it's research has shown that a high consumption of vegetables and fruits with limited meat intake is consistent with evidence-based recommendations from the American Cancer Society to increase our fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes and reduce our red and processed meats eat a diet that's high in whole grains, vegetables, and fruit, limit the consumption of red and processed meat. We know these things. So, if the interpretation of an alkaline diet is to avoid whole grains, legumes, and fruits, remember when I showed you this chart where, yes, we know that high sodium foods, processed foods, processed cereals are not good for us, but we're talking about also eliminating nuts and seeds, beans and lentils, and whole grain products. Well, the research doesn't demonstrate that. The research demonstrates that if we're interpreting the alkaline diet to avoid these foods, it's actually not following the recommended eating pattern to help reduce cancer risk. Again, this the pattern to reduce the cancer risk is a diet that's rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans. And research even shows that consuming whole grains, which is also often controversy, is actually strong evidence that it can help protect against colorectal cancer. So what's the bottom line? Truly, honestly, if you're a little bit confused, and it's really because there are important clear inconsistencies between the alkaline diet and what's established when it comes to evidence-based recommendations and nutrition for reducing the risk of cancer and its recurrence. And also, in case you're wondering, there is no evidence to suggest that alkaline water is justified in terms of helping to reduce acid load and, alkal and alkalinity and 
achieve alkalinity when it comes to our water, I just mostly tell patients that I think it is very costly to do this and we don't even see any benefit from it. So again, what do we know? We have limited human studies on the alkaline diet in cancer. Studies do, that we do have show that there is a reduction in cancer risk with an alkaline approach, but likely related to the consumption of fruits and vegetables and limited meat consumption. These components are consistent with evidence-based recommendations for the diet. However, we need more human studies. And in the meantime, uh, the current evidence also reflects that a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans is recommended as the nutrition approach to reduce cancer risk in its recurrence and should be a major part of your usual daily diet. And before I finish this one up, I just wanna say there, I know I saw a post out there on Instagram um, from a relatively popular physician in the cancer space saying that all cancer patients have a pH of three or four. And when we talk about pH and alkaline versus acidic from that standpoint, I hope you can see that if we had a pH of three or four, we would not be alive. Our body cannot withstand that type of pH in our body. So what we really want to be focusing on is not necessarily whether a food is alkaline or acidic. We really just want to focus on a diet that's rich in whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and legumes, and has limited meat consumption, limited processed foods. We're watching our sodium intake and so much more. So I hope this helps kind of clarify, make a little bit more clear this really complicated myth that um, there's just really not much validity and research behind an alkaline approach. There's no reason to restrict these foods.